we are going to be talking about building virtual relationships and how we can do that in the easiest, simplest, productive way possible with our clients. Welcome to the Cam Club podcast, a show that is on a mission to help key account managers go from busy to boss. I'm your favorite Cam Coach, Warwick Brown, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Kaufman. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Hi, Warwick. I'm the founder of uh, a CRM product called Parma. Our product is uh, pretty much a very, very simple CRM with just three features. And that's the key differentiation of it. Because, like, if you look into this CRM marketplace, like, there is like every feature you can dream of. It was already implemented and most of the CRMs are super complex and like you just like get overwhelmed when you log in into any of those CRMs. So what we decided to do is the opposite. It's uh, build a product where you would feel simplicity inside. And that's why we limited ourselves just to three features, context, notes, and reminders. And we want, we want to keep it as this. Uh, and so, so you actually enjoy using that. So that that's, that's sort of about us and uh, what I'm doing on a daily basis for last year. Why don't we start with like trust and credibility? Because that can be challenged, especially, you know, if you're remote, if you're virtual, if your clients are all over the country or all over the globe, the chances to meet face to face, even prior to the pandemic, you know, were limited. Um, really? But now, obviously, uh, a different kind of generation of account management is kind of emerging where you don't have to meet in person. So that trust and credibility comes a little bit more, more, becomes more challenging, I guess. What are your thoughts around how, how you might go about doing that? Oh uh, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely changed in the last couple of years. Uh, the way how you would do before, like you would meet personally and just like this personal touch that adds up to trust so much and you don't have to you know, do anything extra. Uh, in today's world, uh, what, what I like to say to myself and to anybody else in my team and others, I mean, it's like, don't rush, right? <laughs> because uh, what happens uh, today, like we can get a Zoom call with the yes. salesman and they would be like, oh, like, and you can see like they, they want to close the call, they want to sell you something right away. And that immediately kills the trust with them. Like, you see that there's an agenda transaction in their mind. So... Uh, what I personally like to do is like, I, you know, I, I just don't rush with any relationship on the business side. I assume this is for long term. I assume we will work with this customer or partner or whoever I'm working with, uh, have a conversation with. Them. I assume we will work for 10 years. And as soon as you think about this, like, okay, that's a 10 year relationship. You're not trying to make everything happen in the first call. And then uh, you just let it go. The idea of it, being a long-term relationship means, like you say, there's no rush, but also it allows you the time to learn more about your client because you're not thinking about what can I get out of mm -hmm. this? I've got to move this pipeline along. I've got to sell more. You're just like, hey, let's get to know each other, which means you're asking better questions. It means you're looking at things in a more detailed way. You're putting more thought to your recommendations and you're building that. You're allowing time to demonstrate your your credibility uh, versus, you know, forcing it down your client's throats. Um, yeah. And I think the more you learn about each other, you know, you're, you're, you're interacting in different ways. You are getting to tell stories to each other about past experience or um, you learn a bit more about people outside of work when you allow yeah. yourself the time. And it's such a simple way to think about it, isn't it? I love that uh, idea that you've just sort of talked about tenure as, as, uh, as the, the, the mindset yeah, it, it, and this is all about simplicity. Like, if you think about relationships, mm. it, most of them, they're not difficult. Like, you either enjoy it, and then you keep it, it's, or you don't enjoy it, and then you break it. And it's it's in real life and business, like, it's all the same. And um, one thing which I wanted to add here is, like, it's not just about, like, learning about the other person, uh, but sometimes, like, you want to do something together, on a small scale, right? Uh, before doing like a grand deal that mm. you might have in your mind. Uh, and we're still like talking about the account management and sales. So it's like, you still have something um, uh, to execute, but like try to do something small. Like for example, before signing up the long-term deal, maybe write a blog post together. It's a blog post too much. Like maybe 
um, I don't know, uh, just have like conversations about the challenge what the customer has and like, just like try to simplify this first thing that you do together before going to like really big projects or like long-term relationships. And it also helps to break it down into smaller chunks. And when you've done something yeah. small, it's much easier to do next time something bigger and bigger. Yeah, I agree. The, it's those little building blocks of trust, isn't it? And those little wins, those little yeah. incremental wins, yeah. they, they feel like then they're in safe hands or that you're reliable or that you know your stuff because what you said, you know, you delivered. Uh, and I love that approach too. Those, rather than going all guns blazing for these big rocks, these huge targets or these big projects, start small. Yeah. Yeah. Earn, your, earn the trust, earn the credibility before you launch into you know, things with bigger, with bigger impact. And I think too, one of the things I often think about is in a new relationship, the, the, the client, there's some risk to that, right? Because if they don't know you that well, and if they're not sure that you really are an expert, or they're not sure that you understand how things actually work in terms of product or, or um, their market or their customers, well, if they agree to a decision or if they agree to do something, there's some risk because if it doesn't work out, they're the ones having to pick up the pieces, you know, or they made the recommendation to, to follow your advice. So I think, you know, the more you can do that, build those little building blocks of trust, you're also eliminating some of that risk from a client's point of view about making a decision. What do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um <clears throat> You, you always want to think from the customer perspective, right? Uh, and uh, especially like when you are buying something, you will immediately have exactly the same concerns or risks, and then you will understand uh, why people don't want to rush to, to buy something from you as well, because um, you are uh, you always like cautious in the beginning, and when you've done smaller projects, smaller things. It's much easier to go. Oh, let's try something more. Let's do something more together. Yes. So in that sense, um, uh, it's almost obvious, right? Especially when you look at from customer eyes, <laughs> it becomes like so obvious that uh, that you just like want to do it the same way uh, from the account management perspective too. The one thing that I think is interesting too, in terms of like those initial building blocks and earning trust and credibility, is that I think sometimes it's the little details that matter. And that's what I kind of liked about Palmer was the idea that it's very relationship focused. So it's a, a platform that easily allows you to capture those small little notes that those bits of information that when you recall them, your clients are, in, you know, that they think, well, it's not that they think, because you are interested, you wouldn't have captured that information if you weren't. But your ability to follow up and say, oh, so how was, how was, um, you know, uh, your holiday or in Mykonos last month, or I know you play in a brass band. How was the auditions for that event that you were doing? Or your child was going for their university, looking at the residences and picking out a university and, a, and, a, and um, whatever it might be. Those little things, uh, whether they're personal or whether they're professional, like, oh, I heard, you know, you were hiring for somebody in your team. How did you go? Did you find somebody? Stuff like that goes such a long way. It almost felt like felt like I was watching a wall come down when I would bring up a subject my client had mentioned in passing three weeks before or three months before. They're like, oh, he's paying attention. Oh, he, he cares. So why things mm -hmm. what we do, and I haven't seen any of the CRMs doing, like for example, from every meeting, uh, you can take a photo. Like if you're meeting person to person, you can do a selfie. If you're meeting in the Zoom, I'm doing a screenshot of, um, of our webcams. And the first time you do that, it's sort of like, what's the purpose? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, I, I will remember. But the key thing is, like, when you come back, uh, like, for example, for the next meeting for that person, and you look through the previous meetings, you will actually see the difference of emotions uh, in, the, you know, in, your, in, in your perception or in, in your customer perception. And you see that changing over time. And by looking into this photo, you will actually remember like small details of the, what was this meeting about as well. Like you know, wh where we met, right? Uh, was it the Zoom? Was it the morning? 
uh, and like it's much easier for your brain to remember those small details when you see a visual on top of that. Absolutely, I didn't realize it did that, and that's fascinating because I can imagine like the more relaxed and the more you get to know a customer, it will be apparent just in those screenshots and just amazing how even just a screenshot or a selfie will take you right back to that moment and the little details without even having to make any notes. Yeah. That's fascinating to me. And even if you come back at the end of the day, this photo will help you to recall the notes of the today. And so it's really like small but super powerful. We started talking about like the building blocks of the, the trust, the small starting small thinking that, mm-hmm. you know, long-term mindset, there's no rush in building the relationship. When you start to move into that tenured relationship and you start to move into that long-term, how do you, how do you sustain that? Oh, so how I'm thinking about that and like how I'm executing this for my business and like uh, uh, what I see our customers do as well. So the key technique, what we recommend to use is just like set up a cadence, right? Uh, with the customers, <clears throat> like if you think about like, how did you build friendships? It was all about cadence. In school, you can meet every day and then you talk and that, that's how you become friends. And I think in business life, it's pretty much the same, uh, right? It's just cadence probably not every day. It's like, it's too much. But let's say you're building partnership in the beginning, you want to set up cadence of once per week. And um, then when you are like, doing bigger projects, or maybe it's like longer term thing, then you can go to once per month. But um, just think about this, that looking to uh, an account a person you're working with and just see like, when was the last time we had any interaction? And if that was too long ago, that's a call to action. And it doesn't mean that you have to go and meet with them. It doesn't mean you have to run like immediately and bombard them with some emails. But just like it reminds you about the person and you think about like, okay, what is the right approach for us to engage? Why is it that we didn't talk for so long? Is it like sleeping away or what's, what's going on? And this like this cadence type of thinking like help me to always be on top of mind with with the important customers of ours and just like come back to them on a regular basis and not like in two years with a random email like oh you know we haven't been in touch like why don't we <laughs> why don't we set up a call like when then then it's already too late and this very simple tool that's the the key to everything what we do that idea of just starting with cadence and thinking, well, how frequently should I be in touch with these people? Let me set up some reminders so that I think about, give me give a reminder to think about them. Okay, been a while since we last spoke. Let me do some research. Let me think about a good way to add some value, reach out, remind them that I'm still here, find out where they're at currently since we last met. And like you say, it doesn't have to be a meeting. It can just be a, a an email or a, a voicemail even, um, or a, a LinkedIn message. But that's a simple way to look at it. I haven't thought about it in those terms. I often recommend to people that you need to have certain uh, frequency of interaction. But that's usually the last thing I kind of put on the checklist instead of actually the first. For me, simplicity is the key goal. Like That's what we want to build in the product. But also in those blueprints, what we follow, are uh, as soon as they become more complex, that's when we stop doing them. And the more simpler the rules are, the more chance that your brain will actually keep doing them. And, and that's why I try to like oversimplify everything what's possible. And, uh, and I try to keep like, I would rather have less strategies, but super simple ones. So then you know, then you will stay consistent and then you will repeat to do them or the longer term as well. So that's uh, the simplicity, I think. Uh, I, I wish I understood this like many years ago. <laughs> it will, everything would be so <laughs> yeah, much faster. I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm really thinking about it now. You kind of got my mind whirring, but I'm just thinking the simpler you make that first step, the easier it's going to be for you to be more consistent in doing it. Instead of thinking, well, what would I say to my client? What do I engage with them with? How am I going to reach out? What's the conversation look like? Where's my templates? What? Just start with the reminder to interact with them. 
and then you can build from there. But at least that first step is done. You're like, oh, I, I remembered to reach out. Worry about the other stuff afterwards instead of first. How do you know you've got a good relationship? Like, what's what's the clues for you? Uh, that's actually very very difficult. So, uh, because like uh, it's almost like how do you measure art, right? The, the good mm. art or no? Like, it's very subjective and uh, it's very much uh, in the head like, uh, of the customer, and you can get into that head very easily. Uh, but when it comes to measurement. What we really look at is number of touch points. That's to me is the best proxy on a daily or a weekly basis. I would have an email with like how many touch points I had over the week. And, and then when you track this number over long term, that tells me like, if I'm actually like doing the conversation I need to do uh, as a whole, and then on the single, uh, relationship level. I can just look and see like, okay, how many touch points do you have over time? And, uh, as long as this number is continuing to grow, it feels that the relationship is actually healthy in Parma, it is your notebook and it is a free form text. Like when you write something about the customer, you just like talk to Darwin, whatever thoughts you have. And uh, this free form text gives you a freedom of not like putting yourself into a box, like, oh, I have to put this field. I have to set this uh, lead qualification score here, or I don't have to set like the specific parameters of that customer. And that freedom makes you uh, put more than you would put into traditional CRM. Just because like you're not limited by those boxes of the database, yeah. which tells you like, oh, put this and not that. You realize that, oh, I'm actually put much more interesting details than I would put into my traditional CRM. But this free form text that allows your brain like do whatever you want. And because you're not giving the limits to your brain, it's just like you start flowing and you start actually uh, putting the details, which uh, which you think might be helpful later. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Because in the CRM, you know, if you log onto the app, there's so many fields that you have to click through to get to. There might be stuff that you don't really want to put in there because you think, well, it's not, it's maybe a bit more personal, might be a bit more um, like fluffy or just vague. You know, you don't, they're not notes you necessarily want captured forever. They're just your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And literally you open something like Palmer and it's right there. Yeah. It's not like you have to click through to different sections and open up certain notes and then it's buried between your formal communication with the client versus just the things you want to remember about them or ask yourself. So yeah, I, I can see the difference for sure. Palmer, now let's just get into your platform because I'm curious about like integrations, you know, because some people might use this just independent of the CRM, like just a personal note taking tool, like to be able to go, all right, yeah. let me start to attach notes to people and use okay. this as my personal information database versus how does it plug in with a CRM? Does it need to, what, what, how do you, how would you explain the difference? Like if I, if I wanted to go to my boss and say, I really want to use Palmer, what would you recommend our listeners? How would they pitch it? That's something what we heard from many of our first users. They said like, okay, look, I can't switch my CRM to Parma. It's like, uh, we already invested hundred thousand dollars into that. Like, sorry, it's like it's not yes. happening. I can't make my boss change. But can I use that in parallel? <laughs> because like it's so much easier yes. and so much more intuitive for me as an account manager or as a salesperson. Uh, so what we have done is um, we have a very simple data sync between sales CRM and Parma. In which case, like if you take a note in Parma, it will automatically go back to HubSpot, the Salesforce, whatever your company is using. Yeah. And this way you can uh, just like start using it on your own or even with the team and just make sure that your that your CRM database, which company has uh, invested in, still gets populated with the data. Uh, in addition to that use case, you will realize that even though companies have a CRM, that actually nobody is populating with the data. And then they start using Parma in parallel and just like 
slowly they will be like, oh, but actually that's the product what we use. And, and then it becomes like pharma is more used for ongoing relationship with the customers and CRM is used for marketing and sales funnel. In this way, you just like use different tools for the different stages of the relationship with the customer. In the very traditional flow, you would work with sales CRM until the deal is closed. As soon as the deal closed, Mm. that's it, like gone and forgot about the customer. But for the account manager specifically, that's when your relationship starts. (laughs) Like that's when you Mm. just start working with the customer. And, um, and very often we see like, that's the split, like anything before sales happens in this, um, pipeline management tools and so on, anything, as soon as you have established relationship, that's what companies start to track in our platform, because it's, it's more about ongoing thing. It's more about like making sure that what customer is for you is important. And it's just like, that's how we split that. That's another way of how to see that in the organization, which already has a CRM. Yeah, so you can still have the C- CRM as the single source of truth, but you've kind of, Palm is a different use case. And I haven't cracked the code on managing the day to day relationship. Like I have task management tools, I have project management tools, I have a CRM, I have all sorts of platforms that I've got LinkedIn Navigator and all that, but I've got, there's nothing really this simple that just allows me to like just remember who my key con- people are that I need to keep in touch with, pull up some notes real quick and do it all in seconds without having to like wade through the complexity of all the other tools. Yeah, I think this really taps into that very niche but urgent and important space. We just want to build strong relationships with you know people that are, you know, important to your partnership and capture the information on the fly in an organic way yeah. that reflects the way people kind of work. I think what we also forget and or even don't realize is that um, when you have a relationship with a customer, like 95% of value in business and money is made after the first sales. And um, But the attention and automation and all the workflows which you do in the CRM, they're all focused on the before sales part. And when you think about this, like yes. after the sales, that's when you actually have to start investing into tools and like processes because that's when the actual value will start flowing. It's not like a one-time transaction. It's like a long-term relationship where it can bring more and more value over the time. Managing the account after it's won is usually more around the marketing, but not like the day-to-day activities of managing influential relationships with with key stakeholders and decision makers from an account management perspective it's not really designed for that i have a theory mm. why shoot because yeah. it's so easy what happens afterwards <laughs> you don't need complicated tools for that uh, and uh, you just have to be like a human right and just remember the things yeah. and it's just boring for engineers to build products for that and um and I see like that might be one of the reasons why those big companies like public companies, they're not going after that market because it doesn't feel sophisticated for the engineering teams to do something like uh, cool there. Uh, but for me, the sophistication comes from the simplicity. Like, Can we build a product which would be so simple, but still have, have such a huge power towards uh, your results? Uh, so like I, I'm finding the sophistication in that like um, paradox. Like, can we build something super simple which has like a huge leverage in what you do every day? The thing is, there's so much complexity built into the CRM just through the whole sales pipeline management opportunity, lead generation, uh-huh. quali- qualification, scoring, marketing. That anything that gets added onto it from an account management point of view just becomes even more complicated. So, and you're right. Like a lot of it is. You know, simple reminders and some basic, some basics around relationship building. Um, but when you get into bigger accounts and more complex accounts and different countries and regions and multiple stakeholders, and you know, suddenly there becomes a lot more complexity. And tools on the CRM side just aren't up to scratch for the most part. I don't think. Well, thank you so much for joining the show, Mark. Um, for people that want to reach out or connect or want to learn more about um, Palmer, what, what would you recommend? Uh, if you want to reach out to me personally, I'm super active on LinkedIn. 
Uh, so you can okay. message me there or follow my articles. Uh, if you want to find Pharma, it's pharma.ai. Uh, and we have a chat window there so you can connect with us anytime as well. And happy to hear from you. If anything we chat about resonates, we'd love to talk to you. Well, thank you so much for joining the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening. I've been your favorite chem coach, Warwick Brown, and I'm going to see you in another episode real soon. Bye for now.